Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today we are going to look at the purpose of blend mode. So the why and when to use the blend modes. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons to support me and make these videos possible. Thanks for that, let's get started. So a lot of videos on YouTube, they explain blend modes from a very technical point of view, but that doesn't really help you because you still don't know when to use them. So in this video, we are going to look at them from an artistic point of view. First of all, we want to locate the blend modes. On the right side of your screen, you see the layers here and normal means that nothing is happening to your layer. It is displayed as it is. And then when you click on that, you get a pop down menu. That's what this is called. And in here you have a lot of different blend modes and you can see that they are basically in categories separated by these little white lines. Now over half of them you will probably never use because they are very specific and even I don't really use them ever. So the only categories that we really use are the first three categories. Everything below here, this is kind of crazy town with really strange effects and more like advanced blend modes. If we look at the first three categories, what are they made for? How do they help us? Well, it's pretty easy. Look at the first layer and the name of the first layer in this category and it says darken. So this gives us an idea that all the layers in this category have to do with when we have something dark in a layer that we want to apply to the layers below as a layer blend effect. The next one says lighten. So that means all the things that are bright that I have in a layer, if I want to apply them as a blend effect to the layers below, I would use one of those. And then we have overlay which also is a bit descriptive. I would say when you want to do something atmospheric like sunlight or lens flare or ambient light, then these blend modes are a good way to do that. Okay, so let's look at some applications of what we can actually do with that. So here, for example, I have a handwritten text on paper and I want to apply this to this landscape picture. So um, the question is, how am I going to do that? Well, the text is dark and it is on a white background, a bright background. So I want to add something dark to my picture. That means I will use one of the first categories here. And you can see when I go over them already, this is mixing with the background in a very nice way. Of course, you can see we have these glasses up here. We don't need them. There's a coffee mug down here. We don't need that either. So let's make a quick selection like this Zip. and then simply control C like Caesar and control V like Venus. And we have made a selection or a copy of that selection to a new pixel layer. By the way, just to point it out, my starting layer, you can see here in brackets says pixel. If you do this with an image layer, not going to work. If it is an image layer, right click and rasterize and then you can copy past a selection. Okay, so let's go on. Let's hide this and we have only the text now. And now you can see I don't have any glasses anymore that I'm seeing. But what I'm seeing here is the paper is not completely white. So that's not good. I just want to have the text. What I'm going to do about that? Well, you can do two different things. First of all, you can apply an adjustment layer to this layer with the handwritten text. So go to adjustments and then select levels and pull the levels onto that layer with your handwritten text. And down here, you can see you have the level settings. And so, for example, the background, I want to make the background brighter so it doesn't look through, it doesn't shine through, it is not applied to the layer below. So I use here white level, push this in a little bit and you can see it's gone. And now you can say, well, the text is a little bit too bright. I don't like that. I want my text really saturated and dark. So take the black level and you move it in a little bit. You can see, whoa, this is getting dark. This looks like a really nice text. It already, it looks like a font basically. So that is, you can see within seconds, we have applied 
this effect here very easily. Okay, I said one of two things you can do here. So let's hide the levels adjustment. We have this again. So what we can do here is we can also select the layer with the text, with this handwritten text image here. And we can click on this little cogwheel here. And this will give us the source layer ranges and the underlying composition layer ranges. So I want to hide the brighter parts in this case, only show the darker parts. So I take this um, handle here and pull it down and you can see that the brighter parts are vanishing. And I can bring in this handle here for the darker parts to make this more extreme. And you can see now this also is cut out. It is not as saturated because I'm not making the picture darker. I'm just telling what kind of range I want to see. Let's look at another example. We are going to do an ellipse over here just to show you an effect. So you can see that this ellipse is filled with a light gray. And the light gray, of course, gray is darker than white. So it is something dark even if it is a light gray. So when I go to my darken filters, you can see, oh, this has an effect. Aha, uh -huh. color burn looks pretty cool. The others not so much. And yeah, there is also an interesting effect if you like that kind of thing. The thing here is what every artist does. You have a purpose and you have a certain focus where you say, okay, it's a dark thing. I want to apply it in that dark way to the layers below. And the next thing you're going to do is you go into the dark category here of our blend modes and you try out the blend mode. So this is what basically artists do all day long. They try out, does it look good? Do I like how it feels? Does it give the right mood to the picture? You don't need to understand the technical, mathematical, computer science background to the effect. You just scroll through the different blend modes and you see if you like the effect and that's it. That's the whole magic of being an artist and using these tools in the simplest way possible explained without any kind of complication or technical elements. All right, so let's go to the brighter parts. Let's hide this. Here we have a portrait that's very nice. I downloaded it from Unsplash and we want to add some lighter elements to that. So for example, here we have a picture of some smoke and I only want to have the smoke. I don't want to have the dark background. The good thing is the smoke is bright and the background is completely dark. So if I think about it, I have a bright element. I have a light element that I want to add to my lower layer. So what I'm going to do, I am going to go to the blend modes and I'm going to select one of those. And again, like I said, artistically scroll through them and see which one has the best effect. So this is not the right thing. This is not bad, but it shines too much through. So this one actually looks like she's looking through smoke and I can now push this to the, through the side and you can see now on the side, we have a nice smoke effect. So we have added the smoke effect. We don't have to do any kind of selection or complicated things. We just applied a blend mode that shows only the light parts and not the dark parts, not the complete black parts. And again, if it's not 100% as you want it, apply a levels adjustment to it or um, one of your blend ranges here to filter it out or manipulate the brightness inside of the picture to give a better result. Okay, let's have a look at another thing that is bright that we can add here just to give you some ideas. For example, here we have a lens flare. Of course, light is bright and we want to have the bright parts of the light applied to the image. So again, we're going to go in here, select our layer and then go through our light blend modes and you can see which of them looks the best. Add is pretty cool. Screen, not so bad. Lighten does cut away too much from the effect. So either screen or add. I like add the most in this case, as you can see, gives a pretty cool effect and um, it has cut out all of the dark parts that we don't need. So that is pretty handy 
that is pretty good to have. Now let's go to the more atmospheric elements of the blend mode. So to test this out, I will create a rectangle that is all over the image. So we have already here like a nice warm orange in our uh, rectangle. And when we go down here to overlay and soft light, you can see this has some very interesting effects. The other one below that are a bit stronger and Overlay is a bit harsher, so you can get some not so nice effects with that. So I would always suggest to go for a soft light first. And you can see we have here some very nice light situation now that is a lot warmer than in the original picture. If you look here, for example, uh, if you turn this on and off. And if you go here to fill, where you can change the color, you can select here the HSL color wheel. You can play around with that and see when you make it darker, when you make it brighter, what kind of things happen. Also, you can go over here to the blue side. For example, this looks like a night situation. So you can play around with that. When you get darker, of course, also the image gets darker. So you can see for this kind of atmospheric ambient light effects, this is a really great choice for a blend mode. Another thing I want to point out here is let's make an ellipse here. And as you know, I have created that glorious light pack and part of that are these glorious light styles. When you click on one of them, this is creating this kind of nice warm sunlight. And the reason why I point this out is because you can see here I'm using hard light and I want to explain to you the reason why. So you can see this has a very nice warm sunlight effect on that. And you can see that the colors of this warm sunlight come through very nicely. And this is what hard light can do for you. Because for example, if I switch over to soft light, you can hardly see it overlay the same thing. And if you would go up here to these light effects, you can see that for example, screen does make it brighter, but the color doesn't come through. And when you go to lighten, it's basically the same thing and color dodge the color comes through but in a very harsh way so hard light is a pretty good choice for that and again if you want to use these atmospheric lights atmospheric effects just go into these different blend modes and play around with them and see what works and how they work from an artistic point of view because the most important thing is does it feel right to you I hope you like this introduction into blend modes from an artistic point of view. Like I said, these three upper categories are the most used ones. If you have more questions or want to see more videos about blend modes, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, share it with your friends if you can. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.